human rights law is very much about the human condition. So you are dealing with lives. Pick up the paper, watch refugee crisis, look at homelessness. These are real stories, real people, and require real solutions. The challenge for me is to ask the question, can human rights law play a role in achieving and providing justice for those people? I went to a school which allowed me to have experiences working with disadvantaged children and um, they exposed me to the idea that um, young people often have disadvantages. And for personally, for me, it's that challenge. When someone needs something, what will we do to respond? And for me, human rights becomes that vehicle to ask ourselves a question of what can we do? I ask my students to list the qualities of an effective human rights lawyer. And the thing that comes up first often is compassion, courage to act for them, commitment to serving their interests as well, and creativity, understanding how best to act and serve their needs. And most of the time, as we read cases, we've got legislation, but at the end of the day, lawyering is about being creative with your arguments, with your advocacy, with the skills that you need to advance interests of your client. So I bring my students to the gallery to ask them to draw justice, to step out of their comfort zone, to start thinking about the process by which you create something. And of course, not just visual, but also with law and with language. So for me, it's about the arguments that students make in courtrooms and submissions. They have to be creative in that skill set. As a street artist, I could have a career doing pretty pictures on walls. But I think for me, law school gave me the understanding that there's more than that. What I'd learned there around, you know, some pretty ingrained and pretty entrenched structures of inequality that have kind of come back around to hit me with my art. I've been lecturing for 15 years now and thinking about the skills that students require to become effective lawyers and my view is at least four skills are required. One, to be technical and knowing what the law is, to be critical and to understand the values that inform the law. The third is a different one, it's about being strategic, how do you actually advance and advocate your client's needs. And the fourth, I think, is really important, is being reflective, for whom am I acting and why. There's often a lot of really heavy concepts that people might be turned off um, by you know, reading a heavy submission document or a heavy book or sitting through something that's you know, a really arduous kind of film even, but if you paint something whimsical and something light and invite people in that way, they'll engage with the themes without even realising it. So a student studying law in the master's program, we get opportunities for a range of jobs beyond traditional areas of law. That may involve going over to New York, working with one of the UN agencies, working in the South Pacific with a development organisation, or working locally with an NGO. We have the privilege and pleasure of inviting the world's leading academics to come and teach in our program every year. That makes a program that I think is unheralded in international law. It's a great pleasure to be part of it and a real privilege as well. I'm John Tobin, co-director, Masters of Human Rights Law at Melbourne Law School.